HCAs! What on earth are they and what have I got to do with them? Let's find out in this series of videos. Welcome back to the third video in the Sensible Senko series about education health care needs assessments. If you haven't watched videos one and two, I suggest you go back and have a look at them. Reminder that these were videos I originally filmed for parents over on another channel and they've been really popular so I thought I'd refilm them and put a different dialogue over the top for Senkos. Right. So in the first two videos, we looked at why we might need an education health care needs assessment and what the law actually says around that. This third video is about actually putting in the application. Now, some local authorities are great. They have a standard online application form. Some may send you the application form and it's a Word document you fill it in. Some will just tell you to send a letter. I quite like the letter one, it's nice and straightforward actually. But you need to find out what you are supposed to include in that. Now, I can take you through some common examples here, but you will have to bear in mind that each local authority is very, very slightly different. And although the law says there's only two questions that you actually have to answer in that original letter that you send, the more information you can give, the more likely it is that it's going to be a successful application for the Education Health Needs Care Assessment. Before you start, you need to do a little bit of research. Now, remember, again, this slide was written for parents. This was recommending to them how they could actually start keeping a file about everything that's going to come in their direction. As Senkos, we're actually used to a ton of paperwork. However, parents perhaps aren't necessarily as used to it, and they're certainly not used to keeping a chronology or a list of everybody who's involved with their child. This document here was just a suggested way of keeping that information, and it, if, to be fair, Senkos could use it as well. You could create a copy and give a copy to the parents, really help them out. We'll make sure there's a, a link to this document, which we'll put over on my website for you, so you can download it if you want to use it, or change it to fit your needs. Don't forget my website, www.sendcosolutions.co.uk. OK, so some of those things then. Local authority. You should know who your local authority is. However, remember, when you're applying for an education healthcare needs assessment, you're applying to the local authority in which the child lives. It is not necessarily the local authority in which your school is. Those of you who live on the border of a couple of counties may find yourselves having to deal with four, five, six, seven, maybe even eight different types of assessment paperwork that you need to fill in. So you need to work out which local authority you're dealing with and it might be helpful to write down who those key people are within there. The bit of advice there is that uh, if you need to find the local authority information it usually ends with .gov.uk. You'd be surprised how many people don't actually realise that. Once you've found it, type local offer into the search bar. When you get there, you should be able to find out the name of the Director of Children's Services. Now, as a Senko, you probably know who it is, or you know that it goes to the SEND officer, or you know the name of the Head of Service. Parents, however, don't necessarily know that, and if they're sending in the application, they're actually best to send it to the Director of Children's Services. It is more likely to get to the right department. Now, some local authorities are helpful, some are not very helpful. Some of them will just say, send a letter. If that's the case, fine, I'll show you an example in a minute. Some will send a long document and request that you fill it in with lots of accompanying materials. This is not required in law, but you're probably going to have to fill it in at some point. So you have two options. You can either send the simple request and start collecting the information, they can't ignore your simple request, or you just fill in the paperwork anyway. 
Personally, I'd probably go with option two because I'm going to have to do it at some point. But if I need to speed things up, I might go to option one and start gathering that information in the meantime. If you decide to go with sending a letter, then there's a model template available to download at the end of this. So we're going to include references to the law in that letter. You might think, why? Well, bearing in mind I wrote this for parents, what we need to do is show that we understand the law and we know our rights, and then we're not going to get fobbed off with local authority law. It can be distressing for the parent to write content about their child. That's why it's helpful to have friends and family support them. But as a Senko, we tend to be a little bit neutralised to that, I suppose. And it might be helpful for you to write that document with the parents. The local authority is not judging anybody's ability to write, parent or Senko. So if you want to do it in bullet points rather than writing an essay, that is absolutely fine. You're not always expected to use the correct words or terminology. Again, this was referring to parents, so they might say, oh, little Freddy can't read, whereas we might have written little Freddy has difficulties with his phonological knowledge. It doesn't actually matter which one we write on there. We're not expected at this stage to define their needs. That's the whole point of the Education Healthcare Needs Assessment. We do, however, need to stick to facts and not feelings. And a really good tip here, it was again for parents, but for Senkos too. Sometimes we think, oh, I've got to do this all in one go because I've only got this afternoon to get it done. But actually, you're better off starting something, leaving it a couple of days and coming back to it. Because when you come back to it and reread it, you'll realise, I've missed that out, or oh, I didn't explain that very well. I think I've got a good example now that I could add in. Okay, so if we're sending a letter, it's a formal letter, and we need to include certain things. Things like your correspondence address, and that of the child if it is different to that of the parental address. The local authority will have a record of that, and they do need to check it, especially if, like I say, they are uh, in different local authorities. The date. Now that's really important because the local authority only has six weeks to respond to this request. If you've not got a date on there, they could claim they only received it yesterday. And who you're sending it to. That's why you needed the name of the Director of Children's Services. If you do decide to send this by email, copy yourself into it so that you've got a copy in your sent box and in your own email box. You'd be surprised how many times email boxes tend to hide things, so it's always really useful to have a copy of that email, because you can bet somebody says, I didn't get it. And if you've got read receipts, turn them on. You can't guarantee somebody will click it, but at least it's there. One of the things parents tend to find from the local authority is that the local authority will say, oh, we didn't receive that. Did you put enough postage on it? It's really important that if a parent is sending this as an application with pieces of paper in there, that they understand it isn't just grab a hold of a first class stamp and stick it on the envelope. Generally speaking, it is going to be overweight and oversized and it's going to need the additional postage. Whether the local authority is lying, I can't answer that. But very often it's the answer that parents are given when they're saying, why have you not responded to me? And the local authority will say, we never received it. OK, so we need to clearly state who we want the assessment for. We need to make sure we're using the child's full name and not their nickname. I can remember a child who, uh, he, he was called TJ. And we all knew him as TJ. On our Sims, he was TJ. His real name was Theodophilus and then something beginning with a J. Um, point being, if I'd applied for it under the name of TJ, the local authority probably wouldn't have recognised him. We must make sure we've got that piece of information correct. And this is really important with families that tend to switch names round a little bit. Make sure you include the child's date of birth as well. 
you'd be surprised how many Fred Smiths there might be. OK, probably not this day and age, but I bet there are several Joshua Smiths or James Smiths. And if the child is attending school, then we need to make sure we name the school and the year group that they are in. So at the bottom of this screen here, we've got an example. We've got Andrew Edward Whitaker, the 4th of July 2003, and he attends Porter Woodman Academy. Or Sophia Rose Smith, the 5th of June 2009, currently excluded, should be year five, attending the Santoro Primary School until October 2017, where she was in year three. It's important because the local authority is going to have to try and track down some of these records. If the parent is sending the request, then they write, I am writing as the parent of a birth child to request an assessment of their education, health and social care needs under Section 36, Part 1 of the Children and Families Act 2014. If you are the Senko, then you will put, I am writing as the Senko of the above child to request, etc. You then include the name of that child and the school and what year group. You then put a sentence that says, I understand that the test that the local authority must apply in considering this request is contained in section 36, part 8 of the Children and Families Act 2014 and has two parts. And the reason you're doing this is to show that you know the law. So we're making it clear to the local authority what we are requesting and for who, and we're making it easy for them to identify the correct child. And again, we're making it really apparent from the offset that we absolutely understand the legal rights, either as a parent or as a senko. Part one of that requirement or that test, is that the child or young person must have special educational needs. So I could write a statement like, Andrew has already been identified as having special educational needs by Porter and Woodman Academy. They identified them as, and you go out to list the needs that have been identified and any supporting evidence. You can also mention any needs that you think have not yet been formally identified. Or you could write a sentence that's as vague as, I feel that Andrew may have special educational needs because, and this is where parents tend to find it much easier, they could talk about the number of exclusions that their child has had or the things that they're struggling with that they see at home that perhaps school doesn't. So we're trying to answer that question, we're trying to evidence why the child or young person has special educational needs. So why are we doing it? We're demonstrating the evidence for the first part of the test. You don't need full sentences and you might present your information in a table or as bullet points. If you've got additional evidence, you can send it. You can send attachments, whatever you want, but you will probably be asked for them later anyway. Really big, bold writing here. Do not send originals. And if you've only got one copy of something, don't send that. Again, local authorities are very good at losing things on somebody else's desk. So part two of the test is that it may be necessary for special educational needs provisions to be made through an education health care plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to write sentences that explain our reasons for believing that an EHC plan might be needed. We can list them out and if we've got evidence we're going to put that in there. Maybe the school can't support them out of their current resources. That happens. Come on. How many times do we read on Facebook or Twitter, I've got yet another child coming in with these needs and I cannot meet them from my budget, from my TAs, from what I currently have available? That's a good reason to apply for an EHC. Examples might include that they need specialist teaching or individual support or therapy from an external person. Or we might be looking at professional reports that have been written or the fact that they're not making progress despite really intensive intervention. 
That two-part test, which we've outlined, is the only test that is allowed to be applied under law. I understand it would be unlawful for a local authority to apply a higher threshold for accessing an EHC assessment. Furthermore, this legal test is different to that which must be applied in the decision about whether or not to issue an EHC plan. I believe that the local authority should carry out an EHC assessment to determine the full extent of Andrew's plan. I understand you are required by law to reply to this request within six weeks and that if you refuse, we will be able to appeal to the first tier tribunal, Special Educational Needs and Disability. So this is the next two paragraphs that we're actually going to write on that letter. Again, we're making it really, really clear that we know our legal rights here. So having written all that out, we're going to check it. Check it ourselves, get a friend, neighbour or family member to check it out too. Or if we're the school, get somebody else within the school to check what we've written. If we're going to send any attachments with it, make sure that they are copies, not originals, and definitely not the last copy of something that you have. And don't forget, if you're posting it, make sure you pay that extra fee to post it, preferably by recorded delivery, so that we know that it's actually been received. In conclusion, there's an example template available in the files over on my website for you, which allows you to collate that information about who you're actually dealing with. There's also an example letter over there for you as well if you want to use that and just change the information that's available on that. As always guys, take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.